Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372, and in this video we're going to be covering high availability introduction and the Cisco supported protocols to ensure a highly available environment. Now this term high availability is considered a very broad and general term. Let's get more specific as to how it applies to the devices that we'll be supporting. Availability is calculated mathematically and is often expressed in percentages. Uh, surely you have seen some of these calculations in your place of work. Percentages are often calculated from failure rates and repair times. So different types of high availability include service level high availability, system level high availability, and network level high availability. Let's first understand what reliability and serviceability are because these help us understand the calculations that are used to understand if we have a highly available environment. Reliability measures the ability of, of a system or a solution to function without interruptions. And the most common measurement you've probably seen regarding this is mean time before failure. Serviceability refers to the time it takes to restore a system to service following a failure. A commonly used metric that you've probably seen for this is mean time to repair. Let's start talking about some of the specific protocols that Cisco supports on the devices to provide highly available environments. HSRP is a Cisco proprietary first hop redundancy protocol. Two versions of HSRP are supported on iOS software. Version 1, and this is the default HSRP version. And this restricts the number of configurable HSRP groups to 255. I don't expect you should be exceeding that anytime soon. And then there's version 2. Some updates to version 2. It uses a new multicast address, among many other things that you can see here. Finally, HSRP authentication gives you the option of plain text or MD5 authentication. MD5 authentication can be configured with or without keychains. When implementing HSRP, two or more routers are configured with a standby IP address on a broadcast interface, usually an Ethernet segment. So while they will each have a local IP address, in this case dot two and dot three, a passive election is held to determine the active router, which is actually answering for the gateway IP address dot one. The active router answers ARP requests for the standby IP address with a virtual MAC address, so that the host sends packets to the gateway IP address, winds up sending it to the active router. Now if the active router dies, then another election is held, and in this case, traffic would go out the dot three interface, even though traffic would still be pointing to the virtual dot one IP address. So let's configure HSRP in a lab. First, we're going to assign an IP address to the interface. Then we're going to assign the virtual IP address. This is the IP address that will answer as the gateway between the devices that are running HSRP. Then you can manually set the version number, so we'll run HSRP version 2. And then the timers, so the hello interval, this is how often a packet will be sent uh, to notify the other routers or devices participating in HSRP that this device is active. And then after 30 seconds, it would be declared down. And we can set priority if we'd like, and the higher the priority number, the more likely it will take over as the active router in HSRP. If we set it to one, it's really going to be the gateway of last resort only after the other devices have failed. And then finally, you can set up authentication for HSRP to make sure that communications are secure between the devices while it's running. VRRP is an open standard first hop redundancy protocol which elects a virtual router master and then virtual router backups. You can configure up to 255 virtual routers on an interface. That is, if your system is capable of handling it. 
the default VRRP priority value is 100. And that's important to note because the lower you set it, the less likely it's going to take over as the master. The higher you set it, the more likely it will be. The virtual router master is in charge of sending advertisements to the other routers in the same group. And VRRP, it should be noted, can support both plain text and MD5 authentication. So let's say we have three switches with VRRP, which is non-proprietary. In VRRP, one router is elected as the virtual router master, and the other routers are acting as backups in case the virtual router master fails. So in this case, the master has been elected. Dot three and dot four will serve as backups to dot two. Dot two will answer to the virtual IP address, and if it were to fail, then a backup device would take over. In this example, that would be the dot three device. And if the dot three system failed, then the final backup system, dot four, would take over. So let's configure VRRP in a lab. First, we'll set an IP address on the interface. And then next we'll set the virtual IP address. Next we'll configure the advertise timers. So this configures the interval between successive advertisements by the virtual router master in a VRRP group. The unit of interval is in seconds. The default interval is one second and all routers in the VRR group must use the same timer values. Then we set the priority. The default priority is 100, but we're going to knock that down a bit so that this device does not take over unless absolutely necessary. And then finally, you can configure authentication. Next, let's cover GLBP. GLBP allows multiple gateways in the same GLBP group to actively forward traffic. So instead of just one device forwarding traffic, you can have multiple. Gateway, gateways communicate via hellos messages that are sent by default every three seconds. The GLBP group members elect one gateway to be the AVG. Now the AVG answers all ARP requests to the virtual router address and assigns a virtual MAC address to each member of the GLBP group. GLBP has many other features, but you should really focus on the fact that GLBP does provide load sharing and many different load sharing methods, host dependent, round robin, and weighted. And it does support plain text and or MD5 authentication. But the big advantage and the question you're most likely to get regarding GLBP is when would you use it? And you would use it if you would like to load balance between devices. GLBP provides a standby IP just as HSRP, but it also provides multiple virtual MAC addresses. So when a host on the connected network sends an ARP request, one of the routers answers with the virtual MAC address. Now this does allow for load balancing. You can load balance across multiple systems instead of just relying on one system to serve all the traffic. In this case, we're gonna load balance 50% to router 1, 20% to router 2, and 30% of the traffic to router 3. This can be done because you're using virtual MAC addresses, which take turns answering traffic requests. If a router were to fail, the other remaining routers could take over for all the traffic. Here's an example of GLBP programming. As you can see, an IP address is assigned to the interface, and then a virtual IP address, 10.0.1.1. Uh, the timers, hello timer, is set to 10 seconds, and after 30 seconds, this device would be considered down and no longer participating. Then also note that you can the load balancing configuration as well, which is weighted. 
Now remember, there's many different types of GLBP load balancing. The key to remember is that that is one of the advantages of GLBP. Should you be asked on the CCMP switch exam, load balancing is a key feature of this protocol. And then finally, as you can see, you can set up authentication. IRDP allows hosts to locate routers that can be used as a gateway to reach IP-based devices on other networks. When the device running IRDP operates as a router, router discovery packets are generated. When the device running IRDP operates as a host, router discovery packets are received. IRDP uses ICMP router advertisements and ICMP router solicitation messages to work effectively, and it eliminates the need for manual configuration of gateway addresses on the network. In this specific example, we have three routers, router 1, router 2, and they're given certain priority levels of 190. And we have a third router brought online, which queries the network. It receives responses from the other IRDP routers, notifying the new router that they are available to route traffic. They are put in the local table for that router. And the router then forwards the traffic to the appropriate gateway. Should router 1 fail, then traffic would be forwarded over to router 2. All of this is done without manual configuration for gateway IP addresses. So here's what you've learned. You've received a basic introduction to high availability, and then you've also learned about the specific protocols that Cisco supports in order to ensure a highly available environment. This is a solid foundation for you as you prepare to pass your CCMP switch exam. Good luck in your studies.